Greetings, friend. I will show you how Simon Anthony of Kraken Decrypting solved this puzzle by Jovial called Arbitrary Code Execution. Not only that, I'm going to explain in detail how the advanced strategy that Simon found works and also all the other tips, tricks, and strategies, things he saw and didn't see in this puzzle as he solved it. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. Simon starts by looking in these three rows right here. Notice there's a lot of restrictions because it's the same three cans missing from blocks four, five, and six. So he marks that seven, eight, and nine, and then he eliminates the candidates that can't be there. So there's already a seven in column two and a seven in column four, and then there's, excuse me, an eight in column four, seven in column six. So he looks at that, and then he notices there's also a lot of restriction up here in row three. And so he marks that. It's a four, eight, nine. He's able to eliminate the four from column seven. And this is the key. Really, if you are looking at these four rows, and Jovial telegraphs this so well, when a center puts this much restriction in four or five rows, that center is asking you to look at it and go, what's wrong with this? Because of the restrictions, you should be able to get some solving going. But you got to see the pattern here. And that's what Simon's trying to figure out. He's kind of testing this puzzle to see where is the strategy. He already knows the computer has a hard time solving it. So he knows it's got to be something that a human can see and uh, deduce from looking at it. So after doing that, he goes down to column seven and goes, okay, we got a lot of restrictions there. It's also another seven, eight, nine. And he makes a little mistake here because he doesn't eliminate all the candidates. And I'll come back to that a little bit later. Uh, then he starts looking for Snyder notations. Like, can I do anything with Snyder? Well, I can put two fives up here because he sees there's a five here in column two and column three. And in case you're not familiar, Snyder notation is anytime in a three by three block, you only have two possibilities for can it mark them. It shows restrictions and also can lead to some advanced strategies that help you solve later on. So now he's kind of testing going, well, will Snyder notation work? He's not expecting it to because he knows it's a very hard puzzle. And if it was just Snyder notation, he wouldn't, uh, a computer could solve it very easily. He comes here and knows there's only two places for four in block three. He marks that. And then he saw the five down here in block nine. He's like, oh, well, you know, they got fives in the top left corner and the bottom right. Is there a connection there? He looks, but realizes there really isn't anything there. Then he's like, well, maybe there's a single candidate strategy. I'm gonna look for X-wings. I notice there's an eight here in row eight and also in column four and it restricts the eights can i see anything with the eight so he does his coloring purple for the eights he goes is there another you know an x-wing i can use with the eights and he sees there isn't and then he's like well i got the seven here maybe because you know the seven's peeking out that gives me something so he looks at where sevens are in column four throws them red he goes eh, there's really nothing there and then for some reason he marks this cell green i think he was trying to look for something a little different maybe some three color action but uh didn't really get anywhere with it and then later puts a note on the video going i don't know what i was thinking that's what simon said and that's he's kind of getting he was off the off the track there normally you wouldn't want to go to a single candidate strategy uh, if you're not getting anything with snyder but that's not the case what you need to do is you need to focus on these three four five six seven and what are the restrictions that jovial put into this puzzle so He looks over here and he's like, I wonder what's going on with this seven. And he gets rid of the other colors and he goes, okay, if I look at this, if this is a seven, what would happen? If this was a seven, uh, the only place to put a seven in here in block five would be right there. And then in block four, it'd be down there. And you got, this is a problem because these three columns are the same columns where seven could be in row seven. So he knows, well, that can't, this blue cannot be a seven. So that's a seven, then that'd be a seven, that'd be a seven, and there'd be no place to put a seven along row seven. This is key. And he's starting to get to the point where he's gonna make some progress puzzles. So he's like, okay, I can eliminate a seven from this first blue cell. So he eliminates the seven there, and then he gets rid of that other coloring, all right? Uh, and the same thing being, this pattern doesn't make any sense because if this was an eight, then that had to be an eight, that had to be an eight, and then you wouldn't have any place to put eight. If this is a nine, that'd be a nine, that'd be a nine, no place to put a nine. So he realizes you know this pattern of the three really doesn't work as you compare it to row seven. 
So then he starts looking at other coloring variations. He goes, well, instead, if this blue cell here it can't be that cell, it's got to be this cell, right? Because it can't obviously be this cell right here. So he, that means, and then the other blue would be here. So now he's going to use three different colors. And this is the strategy you need to make progress in the puzzle and be able to solve your first digit. So he does that. And then he goes, okay, I'm going to use some yellow. And let's say this is yellow. Then he knows with uh, this cell right here, uh, this wouldn't be able to be a yellow. The only place would be a yellow in block four would be right there. And then he can put the other yellow here in block five. And then he uses green to nominate the other three. So he knows blue, you know, what blue's got to be either seven, eight, or nine. The yellow's got to be a seven, eight, or nine. Actually, blue's got to be an eight or nine. One of the yellow, you know, the yellow's got to be seven, eight, or nine, and the green's got to be seven, eight, or nine. He's not sure which one it is just yet. But then he finally sees it because he was looking down here at row seven. In reality, what you need to look at is up here in row three. And I actually saw this puzzle ahead of time, and I found this pretty quickly because I was looking at row three. And the difference between row three and row seven is the fact that there's no, that there's already a seven in row three. And so then you can quickly look and go, okay, uh, these yellow cells right here, that pattern blocks and matches with row three. So that means yellow cannot be an eight because if it was an eight, then you'd have no place to put an eight in row three. And if it was a nine, you have no place to put a nine up there in row three. So we know the yellow cells have to be a seven. And this is a key. The first cell you're able to solve is by figuring out that the yellows are seven. So this advanced strategy that Simon's using, uh, it's, it's coloring, it's multicoloring, but it's also a precursor to this really advanced strategy called an autogon. That's what Jovial put in here. When they receive three values in this kind of a pattern within a puzzle, um, it leads to this situation where you could break the puzzle if you have all these like strong links working together. And so you have to go, oh, it can't be that way. It's got to be the opposite. I'm going to start featuring those in some future puzzles. And in fact, I even got a Jovial puzzle lined up for you that's amazing and you'll see that in the very near future on my channel but i do want you to know that stay tuned to the end because i have some insights on jovial a special video you don't want to miss it and it explains a little bit more about how she does her setting and solving okay so we know that these yellows have to be sevens and since these are sevens we know this green cell here can't be a seven it's got to be nine so the greens have to be nines and then that means the blues have to be eight. This is huge because now you'll be able to solve all that and we can start making progress in the puzzle. And so I'm going to get rid of these colors. And actually, this is going to lead us up to our first pause the video moment. At this point in the puzzle, Simon had a hard time figuring out what he could solve next. And the reason is he uh, missed marked one of these cells. All right, he, he put something in there that shouldn't have been, so he had a hard time finding what the next cell was going to be. So pause the video and see if you can see which cell uh, of the orange that Simon didn't mark right and then be able to solve that cell. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you spot it. You're an expert at marking cells. And hopefully you listen. I gave you a little hint at the beginning of this video. Those of you who just want to enjoy the show, this cell right here, never contained an eight because of this eight. And so you can eliminate the eight from that cell and with the seven, solve it for a nine. Okay, let's get rid of the colors and we'll move on with this puzzle. After solving this for a nine, Simon's able to work his way across row seven because he's got this eight right here and this nine. He knows this has to be a seven and then it has to be an eight to complete row seven. And now at this point, you're going to think that this puzzle is really easy to solve. You want to pay attention and stay tuned because there's some really neat patterns that you're going to see as we move forward in this puzzle. We got the initial break in, but we're far from solving it. So after doing this eight, Simon looks up and knows, okay, I can eliminate a nine from right there. Okay, after this, Simon goes back to scenario notation. Notice there's two sevens here in columns one and two. There's only two places left for seven in block seven makes that mark after marking the sevens he comes up here and goes oh um i got a four and a seven here four seven here 
This means this has to be a four and a seven. And he actually misses that there's a seven right there. He could have solved those two right away. But he comes back to that a little bit later. After doing the four and the seven, he finishes up column eight and goes, okay, two and eight. And this is important. Once you get to this point in the puzzle, you want to look at the places where you're creating restrictions and see what you can do solving-wise. Um, after he puts this two eight there, he does see, oh yeah, there is an eight. So I can actually solve this for an eight and solve that for two right away. And then he goes right back to Snyder notation. And he says, there's only two places for two down here in block seven. After doing those marks for the two, he says, oh, okay, I, let me look. There's more restriction here in column four. And he sees, okay, the seven can't be in those two spots. This has to be a seven. Uh, he actually doesn't solve these sevens right away. But since he puts that seven there, he knows, okay, there's only two places left up here in column four. And so he marks the three and the four up there. After marking the three and four up there, he notices that now this can no longer be a four because the four has to be limited to one of these two cells. So he's able to solve that four and eight, which allows him to solve the rest of row three, the nine and the four. And now you're thinking, okay, Timberlake, this is kind of easy. I don't need you anymore. Um, and you're also wondering, is there, you know, Jovial about to drop another hammer with a huge advanced strategy? Well, I can tell you, knowing Jovial, uh, she is going to keep this pretty smooth for the rest of the puzzle. You've been rewarded by finding that initial break-in. And the reason I'm telling you that is because you need to check out the other video I'm going to put at the end here. Because it reveals some more about the insights and how Jovial sets puzzles. So stay tuned to the end and kind of follow along and see if you can solve as well as Simon did. All right, after solving everything across row three, then Simon realizes, okay, we only got two spots for a nine. This is, has to be a nine. And he starts filling in these uh, naked pairs. So that's a five, six up there. It's a five, six down there and a three, four down in block. So then after that, he does come up and notice that the seven's there and he's able to solve for a seven and the four. And he's getting a little bit more excited right now. And he's getting a little faster in his solving because now when you solve this four, you can... This ambiguate the four and a three there in block two, and that helps us that much more with the solving. After doing the four and a three, he marks threes up here in block three with some notation, and he says, okay, I got a nine. It's limited to two places over here in block one, so he marks the nines in block one. After doing the nines, he then comes down and goes, oh, okay, I can actually uh, solve now for the seven, and since I have two fours right here, this last so it's got to be a four. So after marking that four, he's able to uh, put in one six to finish up column three. He doesn't come over here and solve this four and three just yet. He's more concerned about finishing these columns uh, at the present time. But then he looks up and goes, okay, I got a five and an eight here and a five and an eight here. Five and eight must be in these two cells, but there's a nine there. And this is what I call displacing the Snyder because the five and eight have to be in these two cells. This can't be a nine. We know we can solve this cell for a nine right away so that's what he does and then he marks in the five and the eight and so this is a handy trick whenever you displace a snyder like that you can solve that other cell right away so you need to do that and after that he realizes there's only one place uh, remaining in block one it has to be a two which now again displaces the snyder down here in block seven so he's able to solve that for a two after marking that two he finishes up column two with this one and the six, which gives us some restriction in block seven. He goes, okay, the only place left that has to be a nine. And after doing that nine, uh, he comes across and goes, okay, where else can I solve for a nine? Well, it's got to be in row nine, column nine, and which means I can solve for a five right there, which is awesome. And now he's able to disambiguate most of these pairs down here because that's five. That's got to be your six. Come over here and you know that's going to be a six. That's going to be a one. And then he notices the... Uh, that the one only has one place left over here in block nine, and then this has to be a three, and he finishes off these two, the, the three and the four. And he's real excited. Uh, he sees a three here and the three here, and he goes, all right, hey, that means that three must be in the corner. So that's three in the corner, and that's three in the spotlight, Lunas Religion, reference to a great REM song. Okay, after doing that, uh, looking for the finish, Column nine, he goes, okay, there has to be a one. That's the only thing left. And now he can disambiguate these pairs over here. So he solves the one and the six, five and the six, and then come over and go to the five and the eight. And then using the knowledge he has over there, you can see that the two remaining cells are an eight and a two. You need to check out this other video if you want to know how Jovial sets her puzzles. 
Thank you so much, Jovial, for letting me feature these puzzles on my channel. I am starting up Puzzle Packs in February. Click on the membership link in the description below and join the Smarty Party. And thank you so much for watching.